Well, welcome here today. I'm very happy that uh, we close our spring term by um, a visitor or by a lecture by a visitor uh, coming here uh, for at least two purposes. Uh, but what, but who will be here back again in late August? And uh, the reason why he will be back again is the joint uh, conference of dependency linguistics and uh, meaning text theory. And you can see that the topic here actually relates the two uh, approaches or directions topics, uh, namely the uh, meaning text theory and uh, syntactic uh, annotations or syntax. So I am really very happy to welcome here Professor Lao Vaner from the University of Barcelona, but you will probably give a better explanation of the abbreviation that I'll be able. You are always confused with the University of Barcelona, no? So, but we're kind of protesting very loudly. <laughs> so uh, that's University Pomp uh, Universitat Pompeu Fabra. So that's, uh, let's say, a small and young university. And so the two big universities, the University of Barcelona and the Polytechnic University of Barcelona, always make a, a lot of shadows, no? So, <laughs> so we're hardly seen. But nonetheless, I think that, yeah, we're quite uh, successful, no? And so in our fields. So, well, I mean, well, you yeah. are old enough, <laughs> not the, I mean, the university, not you personally. Uh, the university <laughs> is old enough to uh, uh, have this uh, dependency linguistics conference two years ago, and I must say that the mm -hmm. conference was extremely successful. Uh, so that's uh, one of the, I would say, uh, plus points for a university like yours. So, welcome here in Prague, and I think because we all are involved, I think all of us are involved in annotation, and most of us uh, know uh, uh, quite a lot about meaning text theory, so we are very happy to have you here with this wonderful topic. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much, Eva, and uh, I am really kind of very grateful and thankful to be here. No, it's a pleasure and honor. And uh, uh, yeah, especially with this topic. So I'm aware that basically talking about uh, multi-layer, multi-dimensional corpus annotation here in front of this audience, there's a, this is like kind of carrying calls to Newcastle or carrying, as the Spaniards say, in a timber into the forest. No, uh, so basically, so we started uh, much later than you did. And so, I, first of all, so I, uh, I'm sure that I will learn a lot uh, interacting with you. Then, so I'm not, uh, I didn't come to preach what we are doing, but just to learn. Huh? Okay, so this is um, the common work done with uh, Alicia Burga, uh, Lida Yaronskaya, Igor Melchuk, and uh, Simon Mig. So. Uh, so the names of Alicia and Simon are in bold because uh, basically that's their kind of main work. So we're all, all kind of uh, Igor, uh, Lida, and myself were basically assisting more or less. But uh, Alicia and Simon are working on this topic, and uh, even more so Simon because it's part of his PhD thesis. You now, so um, yeah. So the credit should basically go to more, uh, yeah, first of all, to Simo and Alicia. Okay, so the initial motivation for our work on annotation. So basically, so we were not in uh, kind of interested linguists, no? So we said, okay, so it'd be nice to annotate a corpus, uh, um, mul multiple strata, and then see, uh, kind of do empirical studies, or we didn't do it for, let's say, um, to facilitate resources for parsing or other applications. Rather, we uh, did it uh, rather egoistically. So we are um, working already for years on um, text generation, text generation from abstract uh, structures, or even numerical time series, uh, ontologies, et cetera, et cetera. No? So, and, but uh, 
contrary to, to parsing, so the generation kind of got stuck for a long time in rule-based paradigms. No? So, and then, so we decided a couple of years ago, so we, we thought, okay, so why not kind of taking parsing people as an example and start thinking about stochastic statistical generation? For this purpose, basically, we needed resources. So we looked at the resources, and uh, okay, our task is a little bit different. No, so imagine, so we have uh, here this abstract structure here that's a conceptual graph, a la Sova, John Sova. So, and what we want to get out of this structure, so this is a sentence or a couple of sentences, no, a text. No, so that is, so here we need to bridge the gap between this structure and this uh, this sentence or this text. No? Okay, so uh, we can't do it, obviously we can't do it in one jump, no? in one step, because it's just here, it's simply too abstract. No? So uh, what we have here, so the, there are several layers of linguistic description involved. So the conceptual layer, if we would like to count it as a lingu additional linguistic layer, but, uh, well, in any case, semantic, syntactic, and morphological. Okay, so the, um, the structures at a given layer must capture phenomenon of this layer and not the phenomenon of others. No? For example, at the semantic level, layer, we cannot admit non-meaningful nodes like uh, governed propositions, auxiliaries, determinants, uh, syntactic governance, or syntactic relations. No, not kind of, uh, obviously, we can be, let's say, purist line and say, okay, so linguistically from, as linguists, you no, know, so I'm basically not linguist, no, as uh, linguists, we want to separate. No, it's just for pragmatic reasons. We don't have, when we start from such abstract structures, we don't have syntactic information. We need to derive it first. You no, know? that is, uh, okay, so it's just out of necessity. We need to be, let's say, pure then parsing people can allow themselves to be when annotating. Okay, and uh, the syntactic uh, layer, we cannot admit, for example, semantic interpretations, uh, just because if we assume that we annotate semantics at the semantic layer, out of necessity, so we are already kind of coping with, uh, the, uh, with the semantic um, phenomena at the semantic layer. No? Okay, so... Um, well, so this was our basic assumption or starting point. So if we look at uh, like a very well-known, let's say, annotations like the uh, pantry bank and uh, prop bank annotation, so uh, we, we see that basically they uh, don't take it that seriously. No? So we see that there are semantics and syntax and syntax and semantics a little bit. No? So here, this, uh, this is the well-known uh, representation of, uh, of a pen tree bank, pro bank, and here we see if we look at the pen tree bank, that is the syntactic uh, uh, annotation, so uh, it's, we have this n mod relation, n mod, n mod, n mod, and what is good, and that's why it's in green, because it's really, it captures the common syntactic phenomena and doesn't, they don't care about, let's say, different parts of speech, no? So they cover all with one relation. That's, that's good. This is how we want it to be. But if we look at here, at this uh, relation here, manner, so basically that's already uh, kind of semantics, no? So, and, uh, well, certainly all of you know so that the, in the tax set, they all, all also have location and they have temporal, et cetera, et cetera. So some uh, things which already kind of uh, smell a little bit like uh, semantics, no? And if we look at the, uh, at the prop bank, so here we have the significantly is related to expand, and uh, here we have the relation AM manner. AM says so this captures basically syntactic information. And here also, here we have this uh, relative here, and uh, this R is again syntactic information, which signals, okay, so that's a relative clause, so that's A1, that's the first, the argument, but it is realized as a relative clause. No? Okay, so that is, here we have uh, a kind of mixture. No? So we don't want and we cannot allow ourselves no? 
So to do this. Okay, what we need basically, uh, so this is kind of what you guys are doing. That's where we need something like uh, uh, the product dependency tree bank, no? Okay, so uh, this uh, obviously you know, uh, so so uh, that's there are several layers, and we need uh, all layers kind of uh, cleanly kind of sorted out. So this is exactly what we want to have, but we want to have it in a different framework. We want to have it in the meaning text theory framework, no? And also, that's first of all for Spanish because we are working on Spanish. Okay, so and here this is the the outline, let's say, of the remainder of my talk. So what I want to present. So first, very briefly, because I assume that this is also very well known here. So our framework, the meaning text theory, or the model of the meaning text theory, and uh, the different layers. And as you know, one of the layers is the surface syntactic layer. And uh, okay, for reasons I will explain later. So we uh, we start from the surface syntactic layer. So uh, I will talk about the annotation schema we use to annotate the annotation criteria. And then because it's supposed to be multi-layer, also because we need it in our application. So. Uh, now I will talk br very briefly about how we get from the surface syntax to deep syntax and then to semantics. No? Okay, and uh, then finally, because it's uh, we need to have not only multiple dimensions, uh, let's say multiple layers, but also dimensions. So we need uh, the information structure and uh, or communicative structure, uh, as it's called in the meaning text theory. And again, let's say for pragmatic reasons, because as we will see, we cannot do generation, text generation, cannot just skip information structure. So we need to, uh, to, to introduce at least artificially some markers. No? And uh, so we, what we did, and this time on English, on the pro bank, so we started experiments uh, by, on the annotation of ProBank, uh, basic, uh, automatic annotation, more or less, of ProBank with thematicity. No? So I'll very briefly report on this. And finally, then I'll summarize uh, what we did and outline the future work. Okay, so uh, meaning text theory. No? So as you know, so the basic kind of for written language, so what we have here that's... Um, these layers, starting from the semantic layer, then deep syntactic, surface syntactic, deep morphological, surface morphological. So, uh, okay, so for um, our purposes, we add another layer on top of this. You know, some people complain that uh, the MTT model has too many layers, so we add, add another one <laughs> just <laughs> to make it <laughs> more complete. No, so this is, uh, as I said before, this layer helps us to uh, work with, uh, let's say, uh, semantic uh, RDF structures and uh, numerical time series, which we map on the conceptual structures. Okay, so um, so I'll concentrate here on these three layers. Uh, so, okay, over here, so what is... Uh, the transitions, and as you also know, the transitions in generation parsing, whatever, from one layer to another is done in terms of uh, transduction grammars, or formally speaking, transduction. You know, and this is um, a very nice um, formalism, let's say, from the formal kind of um, computational point of view. You know? So uh, we can use graph transduction uh, uh, algorithms, you know, so which we worked on for already for a long time in theoretical computer science. You know? So we are basically not starting from the from the scratch. You know? yeah. Okay, so the semantic layer, just to give an example, so this is like uh, we have predicate argument structures here. We have only kind of numbers, and this is uh, rather similar, and kind of the idea is rather similar. Uh, to the pro bank, we are also kind of kind of stick to numbering arguments. Okay, here you see that we introduce some meta nodes, 
no, just to count, okay, tense is not good here. Uh, I see, you know, so it should be time, no? because just to separate between kind of grammatical or syntactic uh, uh, notions and semantic notions, no? just to escape. Okay, and, uh, okay, so this is the deep syntactic layer here, so you see the difference. And, uh, okay, so the surface syntactic layer, you know, so that that's uh, kind of a full-fledged, what basically people know as the syntactic structure, you know? So it's, uh, <coughs> here we have all uh, tokens of a sentence. Here we have only meaning-bearing um, lexical units. Here we have basically the lexical valence structure, you know? So enriched by kind of a couple, very few other relations. Okay, <coughs> so this is uh, what we have. And as I said before, we start from the surface syntactic layer. You know? So uh, why? Okay, so they, there are very good reasons, as you can imagine. No? So um, that's, the, linguistically speaking, the most fine-grained and challenging annotation. No? So we have, that is, we can say, if we have this, so then we can basically uh, cope with everything, you know, so just to give you a couple of examples, you know, so also I think it's also not necessary, so we have those relations uh, at ad agent sounds uh, semantic, but it's not, you know, <coughs> it's just uh, kind of defined as dependent of a participle, always introduced by, okay, so this is, here we see that we're, we're basically, what I'm kind of talking about, that's uh, Spanish. No? So, the, therefore, the examples are also in Spanish. No? Here, agent, determiner, direct object. Okay, so here we have a criterion. <coughs> what we count is direct object. No? Here, an example. Okay. Okay, okay so about uh, the granularity probably can be seen, seen more clearly here with those four analytical, what we call analytical relations. So what we have is uh, future analytical, if it's a proposition A, governed by a future auxiliary, have uh, ba, uh, a, cuando sir, go is going to drive, then analytical, uh, passive, no, es conducido, et cetera, et cetera, no? So, um, as you can imagine, so we uh, come up with quite a pile of, of different relations. Okay, so um, the nice thing about this is also um, if, we, if you have um, that many relations and uh, related relations uh, which are all kind of um, uh, theoretically justified, so it's possible to, let's say, generalize them. No? Also, what we did, we tried to generalize. So, um, okay, so it's, uh, I'm sorry, that's difficult to see, no? So, for example, you can, um, we have, if we have three oblique object relations, so we can summarize, uh, at a, when we're generalizing, we can summarize this, uh, these three relations to one oblique object, no? So if we, so then we can, uh, uh, here this was a, a complement, we can summarize, okay, the different complement relations to complement. Then we can summarize all those as uh, uh, object, no? All object. So this is the, um, the idea behind this generalization is that uh, depending on the application, you will need more or less uh, fine-grained set of syntactic relations. And uh, if we, uh, let's say, uh, parsing or generation, you could also use uh, different types, uh, kind of different generalization scales, no? Okay, so, um, well, so what, as I said, no? So once we have those relations captured, our, our notation, <coughs> so we basically, we assume, or assume, that we have um, addressed so the the biggest challenge and then um, that we can more or less automatically map uh, the obtained surface syntactic structure to
to the deep syntactic structure, and then, okay, so the story goes from deep syntax to semantics. And again, more or less um, automatically, no? So we'll see then how this can go. And, uh, okay, so another reason to start from surface syntax is that uh, it is kind of a natural kind of target layer of dependency parsers. So I, I guess that all dependency parsers, so they target something similar. No? Obviously, can be, um, can vary depending on the tax set, but in principle, this level of granularity. No? So if we want then to go to uh, the deep syntactic structure, so then um, basically we need to think, uh, we need to redesign so the, uh, the, the parsing strategy. No? So those of you who are working on, uh, on, on stochastic parsing will know it. No? So if we have, that's a nice thing in parsing is that if you keep the number of nodes in the original sentence and then in your syntactic structure. But in the deep syntactic structure we have, that's, uh, let's say this is not isomorphic anymore. No? So then we cannot kind of go ahead and do the same classifier strategy as we, as we do in general uh, kind of parsing environments. No? So and this, is, this is a very, very uh, nice, interesting topic, but it uh, kind of adds somewhat of the complexity. Okay, and uh, yeah, so uh, another very important point is that obviously we have already uh, surface syntactic or something similar uh, as uh, surface syntactic tree banks available also for Spanish so that is we can kind of we don't need to start from scratch if we do uh, our work okay so <coughs> kind of now having decided that we want to start from surface syntax so we need to sit down and to think about criteria, no? So, so the annotators, what kind of criteria do we give the annotators can to do their work? Okay, so uh, basically we start with more or less trivial wishes. So um, the, um, the criteria that, uh, okay, should be easy, recognizable, ideally, no? So by, uh, all annotators and uh, should not be too numerous, no? otherwise kind of it will be difficult. So then kind of what, um, this is a very kind of uh, important criterion to us, focus only on syntax. No? If you do syntax, focus only on syntax. No? Okay, so then um, uh, what we want to have basically that we reach uh, uh, kind of uh, large coverage of syntactic idiosyncrasies of, of the language, in our case Spanish, and so that we are basically good enough in deriving the surface syntactic structure in order to be able then to go ahead no? and uh, get the more, uh, the deeper layers. Okay, so uh, so we ended up with a, with a pile of uh, different criteria and uh, so they um, draw upon kind of part of speech of the government, but basically I think that this is the same procedure you went through when uh, kind of preparing or when kind of thinking about the annotation of your corpus in your framework, no? So government dependent uh, type of linearization, so presence uh, and type of agreement, quotization, possible promotion, demotion, etc., 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 no? So uh, just to give you an example, so if we have the modif relation, so we can say, okay, so among other criteria, so the part of speech of the government is noun, prototypical dependent uh, adjective, so that's, uh, we distinguish between deep and, and, and surface part of speech, no? So dependent is, uh, the part dependent is uh, uh, either, uh, well, participle or an adjective, type of linearization, okay, in Spanish that's a little bit kind of different, Etc. Etc. No. So um, once we have those, okay. So so it's uh, basically we have uh, a lot of criteria, 
No? So, and if we think of, I don't know, so, so we will see later, no? so up to 80 different relations. So it's, and you give all those criteria to an annotator, so basically, so people will struggle with, with them. And uh, the inter-annotator agreement risks to be rather poor, no? Okay. No, uh, so, um, so what we thought that it's, uh, it would be nice uh, to design the, the, the annotation process as a selection process. I don't know, so I'm, uh, I, I would be really curious to see how you, you do this, no? So as a sele uh, selection process, no? So a kind of, we select criteria, no? So we have a pile of criteria, we know those criteria. So, and then the annotator, even if not trained as a linguist very much, you know, just takes, ah, I see this, or I see this. Ah. Okay, so, um, so what we also need then, they organize the criteria in an annotator-friendly way, so that we can easily pick or discard a criteria, say, okay, so this way, this, yes. And, um, so this is kind of, as I say, kind of that's a, a restriction kind of a decision tree process, no? So you go well step by step, and you kind of you can discard uh, criteria and say, okay, no. And finally, ideally, I arrive at a specific relation between two tokens, no? And uh, okay, so this is uh, kind of the the annotator must be able to also say, okay, so the, ah that wasn't right, I uh, kind of, this criterion doesn't apply, no, and needs to do this, or be able to do this without kind of going back the whole process, no? so it's not uh, kind of in this case, in this aspect, it's not a decision tree, okay. And obviously, uh, guidelines, no, so that's that's for sure. They, this is basically what, what uh, kind of we know of, no, so always if you look at the, uh, how people annotate it, pro-bank, entry bank, whatever. And so, so I look at uh, the guidelines. No? So, okay. So, but what we did is just basically design a, a very simple tool, no? but which proved uh, kind of quite useful. No? So what we have here, and I'm afraid that it's very difficult to see it. No? So basically here we have all criteria we find. No? Okay, don't pay attention to, to the, uh, to the, uh, Initial letters, no? just for ordering. No? So, so we we need to polish this, and in the next version of the tool, they should disappear. No, so we have different uh, different criteria. No, for example, uh, okay, uh, whether governor is an adjective, governor is a noun, uh, whatever. No, so just you look at uh, a pair of uh, of tokens between which uh, a relation holds, and then you, you kind of observe, no? And you observe the context. So, okay, and we can say, okay, uh, it's a governor, and uh, the dependent is an adjective, no? So here you can also kind of discard, say, okay, so this criterion doesn't apply for sure, no? And you see, and then you get kind of basically um, suggestions which relations might apply. No, so here we have a modifier, auxiliary phrase, juxtaposition, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If both criteria apply, if one applies, then we have this. Okay, it should be. Okay, and then the, if this criterion applies, uh, well, if none of, uh, of them applies, so then we have kind of the whole pile no? of relations. Okay, and uh, this obviously this can be uh, well going further. So if we select more criteria, no, so that's uh, not only the governor and the dependent, but also the linearization uh, order, no, so you know, so in, in, in Spanish, no, that uh, noun, adjective, no. So the, uh, then we have a canonical order, whether there's a, an agreement involved, etc. no. And, okay, so we know that between a, a kind of, uh, um, the, the noun and the adjective, there's no comma. So sometimes uh, in opposition there are in the comma is allowed. So here we end up with this uh, type of then suggestions. Now, if all the criteria apply, so then we end up with uh, um, one suggestion. Okay, so pick the modifier relation. 
uh, if the only posi the positive uh, criteria here uh, apply, so then we have a couple of, of relations to pick from, et cetera, et cetera, no? Here, the numbers, so that's basically the frequency of the, of the corresponding relation in the, let's say, um, fragment of the corpus, so the annotator chooses as a reference corpus, no? So just to have a, basically also to, to say, okay, so this is very frequent, so, ah, okay, no? So there's a higher chance that it will be the right one. Okay, so this is the, basically the, uh, the framework, you know, the theory and the framework we provide to the annotator, the annotators, you know, um, for annotating the surface syntactic layer. No? So basically now, practice. No? So how would do we do it in reality? No? So this is everything nice. So okay, what we start, so I said that uh, there are uh, kind of, uh, similar, let's say, corpora or tree banks already available. So it would be kind of a um, little bit kind of stupid to start from the scratch, no? And say, okay, no, so now we annotate better, but it will take us longer and, uh, okay, no? So, so what we did is to start from the Ankara uh, corpus, Ankara is, um, yeah, from the, that's joint work actually not only from the, univers uh, by University of Barcelona, but also the Polytechnical University. And I think that they annotated the first version of Ankara was uh, a contribution to one of the first Connell challenges. You know? So and basically they, uh, they followed the same uh, approach as the, the dependency version of the pen tree bank. No? So and there are a couple, as you know, there are a couple of language or tree banks annotated following the, the schema. No? Okay, so uh, here this is what we have uh, uh, looking at Ankara, where one specific, well, one sentence I picked just by, by chance. No? Here uh, the, we have some relations, direct object, so then punctuation, et cetera, but, direct, uh, subject, et cetera, but, as you see, and I, uh, I trust that in the new version, now the current version of Ankara, this is not that frequent anymore. Uh, uh, here we see no name, no name, no name, no? So basically, so that's um, uh, the, let's say the consequence of a semi-automatic uh, annotation, no? So it's where, so the algorithm didn't know what to put or there were doubts. So basically they decided not to annotate at all, no? So they know, so there is a relation, but they don't have the label. Okay, so what we did first is to uh, map this uh, dependency structure to the MTT surface syntactic uh, structure, let's say, no? So just looking at the uh, different uh, criteria and, uh, yeah, looking at the annotation we have in Ankara. No? So uh, for this, uh, we use our, uh, the transduction grammar, so I mentioned before, so we uh, use them not only kind of between the layers of the MTT model, but uh, kind of also as a kind of paraphrasing grammar, no? So I could say here. Okay, so, but uh, this obviously, this automatic mapping still contains a lot of, uh, oh, not a lot, but quite a few errors. And so uh, then we kind of manually revise what, uh, what we mapped, what we got automatically, you know? So, and, uh, okay, so this manual revision was done, I think, that in, so, so, so Simon and Alicia kept kind of iterating over it. I think that now kind of about, um, about, uh, maybe, uh, 10 times, no? So, uh, so basically, so what we got is, uh, a rather, a rather good quality, no? So, okay, so just to summarize the content of this surface syntactic layer, 
that uh, we have all words of a sentence one per node. We have, uh, in total, we have uh, 47 dependency relations um, kind of that we use, that we consider, uh, that we consider purely syntactic and well justified. If you look, for example, so there is a, a book by uh, by Igor uh, Melchuk and uh, uh, Nikolai Pertsov on the surface syntax of English, so where they have um, more relations, you know. So, but kind of um, there are also relations which are basically um, uh, more or less semantically justified, and so we try to avoid this. We use them as we will see. Uh, Afterwards, we use them, but then we again we move them. Okay, so uh, and uh, there were twelve features. So with uh, part of speech, surface form, lemma, etc., IDs, finiteness, etc., etc. Okay, so uh, we have uh, one uh, structure for the surface syntax and uh, morphological structure, just for uh, for obvious reasons, uh, uh, but could be separated. Okay, so, uh, well, so um, the, looking at the, let's say, the, the corpus we obtained, the surface syntactic corpus, so uh, we, obviously we see that there are kind of very often direct correlations with semantic properties, and this is basically how, how language works, as we know. No? So, uh, okay, so this... Uh, gave us the idea or kind of confirmed our idea that we can basically use this uh, layer just to get kind of a multi-layer annotation. No? So that is, we want to get from here, from this annotation, so el documento propone que, I won't translate it because it's not important, and uh, we want to get this structure, no? So here, so it's uh, uh, rather kind of condensed, no? Compared to to the surface syntax, uh, there are only, let's say, uh, argument relations here, and an attribute relation, and two other relations. Okay. So how do we? What do we need to do, no? So in order to get from surface syntax to deep syntax. First, we need to remove all functional words, or actual nodes, no? So that is uh, prepositions, conjuncts, auxiliaries, determiners. We need to introduce missing nodes. In Spanish, this is particularly important because kind of we drop the, the subject, no? So uh, basically, this is uh, very important. And uh, obviously, we need to map the surface syntactic relations to deep syntactic relations. No? And what we also have uh, at the deep syntax uh, level and not at the surface, that's coreference links between nodes. Okay, so again, we use to map this, uh, to do this automatic mapping, we use uh, our graph transduction framework. And, uh, okay, we get this, but we, we uh, kind of, to, to obtain a higher accuracy, we kind of, we do uh, a little trick, no? And here is um, um, basically, no? So in here we go back to Igor's, let's say, original proposal in the uh, surface syntax for English, where he has uh, various types of oblique objects, for example. No, if we look more closely, so oblique object one, oblique object two, etc. So this this is semantics. No, so this is not not syntax. No, so it's a, or is oriented towards the arguments of a, or the valence slots of a, of a lexical unit. No, so but obviously no. So if we have this, so we can get no, very smoothly to the deep syntactic layer. No, and so we kind of we blow up like this. We blow up. Uh, the number of relations from 47 to 79, no? So this is kind of an auxiliary kind of procedure. And uh, 
Okay, so this means that basically what the annotator does is basically annotating at the same time annotating the surface syntax and deep syntax, no? But, um, okay, no, so in order kind of to stick to our claim, no, so kind of that we are, let's say, pure, no? So we, obviously, we, we remove, okay, kind of we don't show those uh, in the fi um, kind of the surface syntactic annotation as such on three bank, so uh, you will not see those those relations, no? So it's just for for mapping, so getting the phi. Okay, so um, that is we get a tree, still a tree. So then the um, with nine abstract dependency relations, so that's the argument relations, modifiers, and the coordination relation, and uh, a number of of uh, different features. Some of them are basically um, auxiliary, you know, just to have then uh, to to kind of facilitate the training of um, of machine learning um, algorithms, and some of them are really kind of theoretically justify the definiteness you know, that we have it as a feature, which was. Uh, and here at the surface syntactic level, we had it as a, as a different, no, as a node, no, as a relation, and was an aspect. No? Okay, so now, so we got, get this deep syntactic structure, and then the procedure is basically absolutely the same, no? So to get to semantics. No? So what we uh, need to, to do, that's introduce meta nodes where we have, now we had uh, the mm, feature let's say tense, whatever, or aspect, no? So what we need to do at the semantic level, uh, we need to introduce meta, uh, explicit meta nodes to capture this information, no? Okay, and uh, then mapping of non-argumental relations, and obviously the argument <laughs> relations as well, no? So, um, so uh, the semantic structure as, um, as it is now, uh, in our tree bank or in our in this case, our graph bank, uh, are all kind of meaningful kind of tokens of the sentence. So here, obviously, this is um, kind of uh, not, kind of the, uh, the purists would say that's not a real semantic structure because we don't disambiguate. We do, uh, no? So we don't have, let's, let's say, lexical units. We have uh, words. Then we have, uh, Basically, we don't have any synonymy treatment, you know? So, which is also kind of in, a, in an MTT semantic structure, you would conflate all the synonyms you know, to have it uh, kind of uh, cleaner, et cetera, et cetera. So, we don't do it. So, it's not real kind of to an, uh, let's say, uh, MTT theoretician. Uh, I couldn't say, hey, we have a semantic structure, look at this, no? So, so actually I did, no? And all of them told me, ah, that's not semantics. <laughs> okay. But uh, what we get is something like this, no? So it's, uh, it's a graph, no? So that's uh, the, um, the, the structure for uh, the kind of sentence we kind of know. So we have here, so the uh, kind of looking at, uh, Okay, uh, at uh, prop bank, so we kind of introduced uh, the the A uh, abbreviation, etc. No, so we have, but basically the important message here is that it's uh, supposed to be a pure predicate argument structure. No, and it's obviously it's not a, not a tree, I mean, it's a graph. No, so which makes it uh, even more complex if we think about processing. No, and. Uh, Kind of machine learning um, strategies to get to the semantic structures. Okay, evaluation. So, how well does it work? So, uh, what we did so far that's evaluating, let's say, um, the agreement between the annotators and our two kind of full time, more or less full time annotators were only two. <laughs> so, can a very small team. No, so what we did is uh, uh, say, okay, we take uh, Wikipedia, uh, Wikipedia page, a Spanish Wikipedia page, and um, we annotate it. No, so uh, 
okay, the two anno uh, annotators annotate this this page. Um, and uh, okay, so so well, that's not entirely true. So so we first parse it by uh, using uh, Van Bonnet's parser, and then the annotators kind of correct it, no? just to to accelerate the uh, the process. Okay, so uh, then we kind of so okay, no, so probably so kind of uh, the annotators will have a different inter annotator agreement when they are coping with 15 relations than when they are coping with uh, 79 relations. No, let's see how this affects. No, that also kind of then to basically to you know to 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 see how accurate the whole is. No, so then w what we did is uh, the use the kernel. Uh, evaluation and can just took one of those um, annotations from one annotator as a gold standard. So that is kind of just to be able to compare so how well uh, those two match. No? So what we um, um, came up with, no? so this is kind of uh, that's unlabeled accuracy and that's labeled accuracy. No? So uh, basically, no? so the we see that uh, the with um, the unlabeled basically no so they are always that's not surprising no so basically they always nearly always agree on the dependencies no so uh, between which token there is a dependency relation no uh, if it uh, then uh, when it came to labeling no uh, so okay so uh, we get, we got kind of uh, 89 for the 79 relations and uh, 92 basically uh, yeah for 92 something for the 47 and uh, 15 uh, different relations no so it's um, okay no so uh, well so the, the, that much for let's say the 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 real kind of the tree bank no now because um, we are still not done no so when we think of our application that is our um, generation no so we if we want to uh, to do stochastic generation we need to think of uh, as I said information structure why basically you know so if we have this structure so we don't uh, kind of uh, we can realize it in uh, in different ways, no. So, so we don't know what how the syntactic structure will look like, basically, no. So that is, we we need at least we need kind of a theme ream or something similar, topic focus articulation, whatever, no. So we need uh, information structure. Okay. So and and this is really kind of a work in progress. So we just we want uh, wanted to to see how um, to what extent we can automate this uh, notation. No, so and uh, so we thought, okay, it would be probably it would be a good idea to start with English instead of Spanish, because like this will get more feedback from uh, from the community. You know, because if you try to publish something on Spanish, so people are not that interested. You know, then kind of English is unfortunately you no, know, so it's still kind of the uh, the language. You no, know? okay. So thematicity in MTT. So basically, this is also kind of what you what you know just for repetition. So um, so well um, in MTT. So there's uh, the uh, thematic dimension is kind of uh, divided in three different parts, not in two. Theme ream. There is also a specifier. You no. Know? Specify sets up what uh, Igor says, sets up the context of an uh, utterance. Ream, nothing new. Uh, denote the part that the speaker presents as stated by the utterance, and theme denote the part that presents something about which Ream is stated. Now here only kind of as a as a illustration, so I uh, can skip here years ago. So this would be the specifier. He collaborated with blah blah, blah and here we. And that theme that's here ream and here we have an embedded uh, theme ream again no so it's basically you know so nothing nothing new okay so uh, again no obviously we need to um, think about criteria no so so unlike um, the um, let's say syntactic 
criteria, this is more difficult, no? Because it's uh, there, you know, there are so many debates, no? So, well, but okay. So we try to come up with something preliminary, no specifier, no? And okay, so we we are kind of claimed. Let me put it this way, no? So that uh, certain fronted elements, locative, manner, circumstantials, uh, agent with sentential scope, etc., which is course markers. So uh, if they are fronted, so then they are specifiers. No circumstances that are according to it, sir, they are also uh, specifiers. Phrases that introduce direct speech and piece and vocative case, etc. No theme. So okay, so there is a kind of uh, there are quite a few kind of suggestions. Um, what how in the literature how theme can be identified. But if you ask, uh, kind of, you say, um, okay, uh, okay, this, the person X or uh, scholar X says the theme is this, so then uh, scholar Y will certainly disagree and say, okay, no, so here, oh, okay. So here, uh, this is what we use basically and ream uh, the same. No? So, uh, not complete, that's for sure. No? So, but something to start from. Okay, so what uh, we did, as I said, so our primary intention was to see how, kind of, whether we can use basically automatic means to annotate. No? And uh, based on, let's say, uh, a small training corpus. No? So, so we didn't want, or we don't have the means to say, okay, now 20,000 sentences kind of annotate with theme ream and then we'll see later what what happens no so what we did we annotated uh, uh, about 500 sentences from the pro bank and uh, okay so uh, then and this uh, here uh, in this work uh, Dan Bonnet was heavily involved basically he he uh, implemented those two um, uh, algorithms. So what we say, okay, no. So we can uh, we can interpret the um, annotation of uh, of a sentence with thematicity or whatever whatever dimension of the information structure as tagging. No. So that is, we need to uh, then we we need to assign to each token. We need to assign a specific tag. No. So one of those three we have three. No. Specify a theme read. And uh, so this is uh, this was implemented as a classifier-based sequence tagger. So it's kind of we go from the left to the right, and we look at the at a window of four, no, two to the left, two to the right, to decide what kind of tag to assign. So that's uh, basically tagger. But then we say, okay, no. So the, this can also be interpreted as a parser, as a parsing task, no. So why not? Uh, uh, take a transition-based parser and uh, kind of uh, adapt it to parse so the, uh, let's say, thematicity structure, no? So, so this is, now if we look at it, no? So it's a hierarchical structure, so it's a, basically a phrase structure, nothing else, no? So uh, very uh, kind of peculiar, but a phrase structure, no? Okay, so uh, uh, the, we trained on uh, 360 sentences, and uh, the we were really surprised, no, that, that okay, we expected the tagger would perform poor, no, and so we kind of we said, okay, if it performs poor, we take it as baseline, no. But the transition-based uh, parser already kind of here we have uh, here that's um, the uh, kind of assign uh, score, so just assigning a, a, a tag to a token, then. This is labeled a bracket score, no? where we have, okay, this kind of, let's say, uh, chunk is theme, this chunk is specifier, and that's unlabeled, no? just bracketing, no? so getting the phrase structure, so to speak. No? And here, that's uh, what you see, no? kind of, that's uh, uh, 68 or 69 almost no? percent of, of accuracy, and here unlabeled. 74. That's not bad at all, no, if you look at uh, 360 uh, sentences as training corpus, no? So it's, uh, I think that I don't have in my, uh, now, 
don't remember how well basically the uh, the uh, the phrase structure parsers perform. You no, know, obviously higher, but uh, kind of we can reach the same, I guess, the same accuracy. You no, know? so when we train on a let's say a larger corpus, and we see here, you no, know, there, there's a kind of a large potential. You no, know? so so basically, you no. Know, so here you see the number of annotated sentences or trained, and here you see the accuracy, the uh, the the labeled bracket uh, accuracy, no? And here, no, so I guess, no, if we uh, annotate, hopefully kind of 2,000, so we'll, uh, we'll be kind of uh, better, no? So this is, uh, I think that this is uh, really encouraging, no? Because it's, uh, information structure is really very important, and uh, if we don't have the means, no? So we, uh, uh, to annotate manually, so it's uh, it's possible to to parse, no, so in terms of the information structure. Okay, so uh, yeah, I think that it's uh, well, basically, no summary and future work, no. So um, and uh, this is basically no. So I think that it's always good when you start an annotation initiative. Look, know what other people did, and avoid pitfalls, and uh, look at at good examples, no, and. Uh, so uh, the PDT was really kind of a, a very good example uh, for us, you know? So, and I think that uh, first, kind of the, the methodology, you no? Know? So kind of uh, try to, to separate the phenomena, et cetera, you no? Know? So multi-layer. So I think that uh, this was really, but, and also because there is a, a certain parallel, kind of the, the, I think that's also because of the theoretical proximity, you no? Know? So uh, that, uh, Basically, no, we have uh, kind of, we can establish correspondence, even if it's a rough correspondence between the different groups. No? So I think that this is also helpful. Okay, so our uh, annotation of uh, the multi-layer annotation of Spanish is, uh, we consider it's rather kind of stable now. So it's, uh, it's still a very small corpus because we kind of we paid attention and put a lot of effort into improving the the quality, you know. So uh, and uh, the Ankara we started from. So they at that time they had only three thousand five hundred. You no, know? in the meantime, so they uh, they have twenty thousand. But basically, what is also encouraging, and I think that this is the central message we got from. From uh, this, no, so that uh, if we train a parser, okay, here about a bonus parser on uh, the whole of Ankara, and uh, we get the same accuracy as we uh, when we train on our tiny corpus, let's say, no. So uh, I think it's um, basically in a good quality of a tree bank pays off, basically, no. Okay, so. Um, so, well, we'll, uh, we'll continue to, to work on the annotation of the information on communicative structure, as it's called in MTT, and uh, we'll include also other dimensions. Now we started to work on, on uh, uh, giving you and focus, etc. cetera, no? And, uh, okay, so what we also... Um, want now, so that's the, the extension of the tree bank. And, uh, okay, so I said that it's always kind of where almost involuntarily kind of annot became annotators. <laughs> it's a, out of nece necessity. We, we need corpora uh, or tree banks, reliable tree banks to do generation. So, and uh, we have a couple of, of uh, projects, Europe, European projects, where we deal with, uh, with different languages. So we now kind of we start a project where we, we will work on Bulgarian, German, and Greek. You know? So we'll uh, start annotating uh, for those three languages, at least. And we already have for Finnish, it was a, a previous project we have uh, 2,000 sentences, you know, so already kind of annotated, you know, so and uh, hopefully this work will also continue, you know. So the, the long-term goal is to have uh, for a whole pile of languages, 
to have, let's say, uh, uh, kind of reliable tree banks, multi-layer tree banks. Okay, so I think that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. much for a uh, very nice talk and um, also for the uh, efforts uh, you have taken to look at the work we are doing here and I think that's uh, really something which we appreciate uh, very 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 much um, and um, so I think I will now open the floor for discussion before I add some of my questions. is uh, well known for its uh, uh, in, for its influence in uh, lexicography like uh, explanatory combinatorial dictionaries uh, well known work uh, you did not mention uh, any uh, any lexicon here so uh, do you plan to induce them somehow f from the annotated tree bank or is that a separate project or okay so uh, so uh, actually so we uh, i didn't mention it because it's not yet included so uh, this is in fact no so we have a, a, another project working on kind of uh, automatic uh, kind of identification and classification of, of lexical functions no excuse me uh, is it interlinked uh, do you make some uh, annotated uh, relation between the tree bank like instances of verbs and their lexicographical descriptions do you interlink it somehow so what we uh, okay so those are for the time being uh, 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 completely different projects no so so we annotate lexical functions and uh, then kind of train on uh, okay classifiers again no? and tr uh, try then to to recognize no lexical functions again kind of uh, the, the um, Procedure is rather similar, no? So, so we also we kind of generalize because, as you know, kind of uh, nobody can remember or identify that many lexical functions as uh, listed, no? In uh, in uh, the explanatory combinatorial lexicography, no? So uh, we generalize and we then we try to classify generalized and also kind of lexical functions as such, no? And uh, also kind of if I might add, uh, so we started now, so that's our second project on uh, recognition of collocation errors in, uh, in writings of uh, American students who learn if Spanish. Uh, so uh, we kind of classify the errors and then try to suggest the correction. That is, we, we need to recognize the semantics of the collocation error, also the intention of the, of the learner. So, you mentioned that uh, the uh, transformation from the surface syntactic uh, structure to the deep, uh, deeper one is uh, almost uh, automatized. Yeah. Uh, uh, did you uh, did you face any troubles when recognizing which words are functional and which are uh, really meaningful? I mean, like model verbs or things like that. There's a question. There's some fuzzy boundary between functional words and or, or is it a, is there a clear cut in Spanish for that? Uh, okay, so it's uh, more or less uh, uh, okay. So there, uh, I need to look now whether there is uh, among the errors. So there, but uh, this, so we didn't experience uh, particular problems on this. Just a uh, comment or maybe a sub-question to your first question. I could imagine that the lexical functions could serve you or when you try to integrate them, uh, could uh, serve you uh, on this um, highest level, on the conceptual one. So there you might have some uh, information from the lexical functions or not. Uh, maybe not. Uh not on the, at the conceptual level, I don't think so. No, it's, it's, it's too abstract. It basically, it is uh, uh, just a mapping 
from, let's say, an ontological representation. So kind of they will work uh, quite often with RD, uh, RDF triples, no? so just mapping onto the conceptual structures. So, um, but uh, kind of when uh, going from semantics to, to deep syntax, no? and the, it's kind of we just we omit it completely. No? So this is, as you kind of uh, uh, noticed, no? so uh, the, the lexical functions. No? My question is also about the apparent simplicity of uh, your deep syntax as you have uh, as you have used it, used it in this work, um, but not about the not about the part with uh, removal of function words, but about uh, adding the missing nodes. Uh, did you find any problems in this one? Because there are many types of missing nodes you can decide to add, and I'm not so familiar with deep synaptic structures in MTT to understand exactly. So, for instance, in Prague dependency tree bank, sometimes there are problems in this regard, even for annotator agreement, if they add missing words for, say, parts of coordinated uh, structures like red and white wine. It's not really trivial. So. I'm not sure whether it is something you attempted or something you decided not to do. Uh, so, so we we did it, and and in, indeed, no. So this was one uh, one source of, of the problems, and what, and uh, also not a kind of um, this can be tuned to a certain extent, but it remains kind of this kind of pushes down the accuracy, you know? So, uh, but uh, what. Uh, where it's more problematic, what we are doing now, I mentioned this briefly, no? so, so we are now working on parsing, deep parsing, no? so where we uh, want to get from the surface syntactic to the deep syntactic structure, and there it is, uh, it is a problem. And the related question is, still including all the, all the problems and not finished things, do you find uh, that actually these the deep syntactic and even the semantic structures uh, help you in the in the generation. Actually, do you already have some experiments? <laughs> How could I say no? Uh, no they don't help. <laughs> no, um, I say that you still didn't evaluate it. No, it's uh, no. Um, in fact, yes, um, they they do help. No, say so they do help because it's. Um, so uh, you mean now going from conceptual, let's say, directly to surface syntax, or uh, so just skip, skipping, let's say, two of them or one of them, semantics or uh, or deep syntax or both. I don't know how you actually generate. I'm just asking whether whether what you have just tried mm -hmm. seems to be promising. Mm -hmm. Okay. No. So so what uh, basically no. So what we uh, in generation, so so there are kind of experiments where people try to to go directly from very abstract structures to the surface. So and the the quality uh, kind of the quality is rather bad or restricted. Let's say you know so they uh, uh, then they are uh, they those generators do not scale up, basically. Now so in order to scale up, you need to have uh, kind of different phenomena. Treated at different layers, no. So, and I think that it's the semantic structure, which is uh, basically the conceptual structure, is still language independent, no. So, and we usually we kind of do multilingual generation. So then the semantic structure is, uh, uh, as I said, a pure predicate argument structure, but it's already uh, language dependent. And then the deep syntactic structure, we need it, basically, no, to introduce kind of the. Um, the valency of the words, no? So they are kind of the, uh, no, so the problem is that we don't ha even have words, no? Or, or lexical units when we uh, start generating, no? So, so what we have, that's kind of semantic um, and conceptual entities. In order to lexicalize, no? So we need to, to pick the right word and then uh, kind of this is uh, most conveniently at the deep syntactic structure. No. So, yes, I would say so. This is uh, 
basically, this is, uh, uh, I don't know about parsing, no? So because it's, uh, I just came to parsing basically accidentally, no? So, uh, but uh, from generation, uh, this is how I came to MTT, no? So from generation, because I used to work in the uh, systemic functional framework, Halliday, and then I saw that they try to do kind of develop networks where they kind of start from a very, very abstract structure and then kind of uh, restrict the, uh, the possibilities, the linguistic possibilities, and come up with, uh, with a sentence, no? So just one net, let's say, one decision network, no? And uh, it was really very difficult to come up with something really flexible and uh, uh, kind of uh, modular and really kind of scalable. No, so and uh, so from this point of view, so MTT and the multi kind of straddle uh, framework of MTT is ideal. No? In your list of dependencies, there were objects one to object five. And because I think that it is something similar what corresponds our uh, inner participants, I will ask you, is it possible to have an object five and missing object four, object three? Oof. <laughs> That's, uh... I, I know, so, so I, I need to, uh, well, uh, uh, I, I don't think so. So, but just when I, I need to look at the data, no? So I never looked at, uh, at the data that closely, no? So, but I, I would assume that n no, no. Well, uh, but um, basically I can't kind of meaningfully answer this question. So I'm, uh, yeah. So I didn't look at Thank you. I ask hmm? it because it is connected with something what we call shift, shifting mm -hmm. of, of uh, participants. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so, so, yeah. so I will ask my questions. Um, uh, the, uh, it's, some of them are See, more or less theoretical, some of them are just a procedure of annotation. The first question would be, do you allow for your uh, annotators and then in the final, uh, in the final shape of the tree bank, uh, multiple labels for one node? I mean, uh, if, if the annotator feels that the sentence is ambiguous as for some function or something. Do, are they allowed to have a slash? No. No. The same with us, so uh, I'm happy to hear. The other question is, when you, uh, in the final, of course, my concern is uh, theme reading, so mm -hmm. <laughs> one additional information from our side. Uh, we have just finished a paper on Friday. Uh, where, uh, not, not for Depling, <laughs> but for some other conference, uh, where we, um, list a couple of rules or hypotheses uh, yeah, of yeah, rules, yeah, yeah. which may lead to something like pre and automatic pre annotation of, uh, theme ream. So it's very, I mean, yeah, uh, very we, similar to what you have said. So it would be great if you. Yeah, yeah, could, I will give you the yeah, manuscript. Yeah. It's not a nice paper, but I think these rules are very nice. Uh, sorry to say, I am a co-author, so I can <laughs> say that it's not a nice paper. Uh, so uh, my question would be: um, If you, if your annotators annotate thematicity according to these uh, mm -hmm. criteria, do they look at the uh, raw text or do they look at the trees? Or I mean, at, at the, the um, okay, so at the raw text. And so we, we look at the trees. So yes, that might I, I be think a the, difference. This, uh, and I think that it's more uh, kind of useful, probably. Well, no? it's so question, it's, uh, but, but I mean, that's what we, mm -hmm, what we mm -hmm, are doing. Mm -hmm. And then uh, another question, uh, last one, uh, that um, <clears throat> in theoretical discussions, uh, when people uh, criticize dependency, so there's one point in which they uh, uh, criticize or they say that uh, dependency doesn't bring any um, stable or good criteria. 
uh, for the decision which element is the head and which is the mm -hmm. dependent. Mm -hmm. And um, so I can't quote any figures, but I remember that in the first phase of our annotation efforts, we looked at the uh, agreement of annotators separately, uh, agreement in the structure and agreement in the, in the labels. And for us, the result was that the, there was a pretty nice agreement as for the structure and disagreement <laughs> as for the labels. So I would conclude that mm -hmm. it's not that difficult to decide what is the head and what is the dependent. It's more difficult to assign the functions. Yeah, I, I, absolutely, okay. absolutely. No, so I think that in here we see this. Oh. Uh. Okay, doesn't work. Uh, okay, no. Oh. So we had this. Uh, uh, these uh, these figures. Oops. No. So we have this the unlabeled. So basically, that's the structure. No. No. So that's uh, ninety ninety six percent of of uh, agreement. So I think that this is, uh, yeah, so I completely agree, you know, so this is uh, <laughs> Just a very simple question, are you going to publish the three banks? Will they be available? Yeah, they are already available. They are already yeah, available. Yeah. No, so, okay. so it's uh, for uh, legal reasons, no, uh, so we, uh, must refer to Ankara, so at the web page of the University of Barcelona, so and the license agreement must be signed with them. You know? So now it's our extension will be on other data, other material, you know? so we don't depend on them. You know? so, but uh, we talk to them and they kind of, they agreed to kind of give it for, you know, whatever uh, kind of purposes or whatever, you know? so, so without kind of, a uh, very low-level technical question. If I remember the Ankara Tree Bank correctly, uh, they don't keep the rule one word per note, which you mentioned. They, they have some underscores, at least in the kernel yeah. uh, release. So did you keep this rule, or, or did you break it into, into separate words? We, we kind of we decided it's just one, uh, one relation per. Yeah. So if I see correctly there are no further questions uh, i can only uh, invite you to come for the dependency linguistics conference where you listen to a paper on uh, the uh, on issues related to what we have been uh, listening to today so i can only repeat um, my gratitude that you were willing uh, to come um, and that uh, you were uh, you agreed to give a talk here. You were most oh, welcome, pleasure. and we are looking forward to your uh, uh, visit and talk in, in August. Thank you for coming, yes. and um, this is the end of our spring term and of the spring term of uh, Fred Jelinek uh, series of lectures. So we are looking forward to see each other uh, in this group. Um, in October, so I can only wish you uh, to to the to those who will have to pass some exams. So I wish you good success, and to uh, all of you to have a nice, uh, relaxing time during the summer. So thank you again.